Let's talk about fire. The welding arc can reach a temperature of up to 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you know how hot that is, David? It's really hot. Think the arc is the main fire hazard? Think again. The fire hazard comes from the sparks and spatter of molten metal created by the arc. You know the pretty orange lights and sparkle that happen when welding? That's what I'm talking about. Yes, David, it looks very much like a firework, but the spark and spatter from a weld is much hotter and much more dangerous than what you've got there. So when considering ways to celebrate your country's birthday, consider over-the-counter fireworks and keep welding in the workplace. Did you know that sparks and spatter can spray up to 35 feet from the area in which you're welding? You've got to remove or protect any flammable material within a 35-foot radius of where you'll be welding. Is any fire dangerous? You bet. Does every fire start in a burst of flames? Not a chance. A spark that comes in contact with flammable or combustible material can smolder, burning the material slowly over time. You might not notice it at first, like the girl in the movie who wears glasses, until she takes them off and you realize, whoa, she's hot. While you're welding, your workpiece can become extremely hot, so make sure it's not in contact with anything flammable that may burn when heated. Some materials that can turn your workplace into a disco inferno are solids such as wood, cardboard, and paper. Watch out for those wooden pallets that materials come in. Those are always lying around work sites. Liquids like gasoline, oil, paints, and thinners. Used rags gather quickly and often go ignored. Remember, they could be soaked in highly flammable liquid. Gas like acetylene, propane, and hydrogen. But these are just a few examples, so keep your wits about you. If you don't know whether a substance in your workplace is flammable or not, how do you find out? Not like that, David. Contact the head honcho, the big G's, the top dog, and get approval. If the material is flammable, you better remove it. If you can't remove it, protect it. How do you protect material that can't be moved? Carefully. Use a piece of sheet metal or a fire-resistant blanket and don't cut corners. Burning is irreversible. If you're welding within 35 feet of flammable material that can't be moved even once you've protected it, you need a sidekick. This is Francis. He'll be your fire watcher. He'll watch where your sparks are flying and grab a fire extinguisher or sound the alarm if things go down. Which they won't because you've removed or protected every potential hazard, right David? I know you did. You and the fire watcher need to stick around a full half hour after welding is complete to make sure there aren't any smoldering fires you didn't see. This is a great chance to work on your small talk. Working on an elevated location? Look out below. You may need to increase that 35-foot range to account for falling sparks. And hey, make sure there's no one working below you. No one appreciates a spatter shower these days. And lastly, working in a dusty location? Take extra care. Under certain conditions, fine dust particles may be combustible and can burn without warning. Guess what? That's called a flash fire. Or worse yet, an explosion. Know your welding environment. Only experienced welders should work on piping or closed containers that may contain combustible materials. For work like this, you need to read up. I recommend starting with the American Welding Society document F4.1, Safe Practices for the Preparation of Containers and Piping for Welding and Cutting. With a title like that, you might not want to suggest it for your book club, but you will find it essential in setting up to weld on closed containers or piping. You see, when working with containers that may hold or have held combustible substances, you might need to fill the container with an inert gas or water. And if you don't do that just right, kaboom could be the last sound you ever hear. Let's review some basic fire safety. One, know where the fire extinguishers are, that their pressure is sufficient, and that you know how to use them. Two, know where the fire alarms are, and three, Know where the fire exits are. No fire extinguishers around? 
Make sure there's a fire hose with water pressure, sand buckets, fire-resistant blankets, or other firefighting equipment. Welding without appropriate firefighting equipment on hand is like showing up to book club without reading the material. You'll look like a jerk and you won't get invited back. Or in the case of fire and explosion safety, it could be much worse. Step one of basic fire safety, be prepared. Let's take a look at step two. This is a panic button. As we all know, the first rule of any emergency is do not panic. David! <coughs> well, David, it looks like you cannot resist pushing any button you see. We've removed the panic button and replaced it with a do not panic button, because a panic button should never be used. Let's review what to do if there is a fire. First, remain calm. Is the fire small enough? You can try to put it out with a fire extinguisher. You know how to use that puppy because you reviewed the instructions on it before you began welding. Always aim the fire extinguisher at the base of the fire on the material that's burning, not on the flames. If the fire is too large, call the fire department, sound the fire alarm, and let the other workers know. Shut off your welder and get the heck out of there. David, you've taken the do not panic idea to the next level. Thanks, very helpful. Most fire safety precautions are common sense, but you may need additional safety training and certification depending on the job. Consult your employer or safety director. 